Hey, how you doing guys? Uh, for this uh, topic, um, it's actually going to be a viewer question. Uh, we're going to take a look at that right now. And uh, this is from um, Ahmet uh, Ozkurt. Hopefully I pronounced your name right. And uh, he says, hey, hey, dashboard is gone from MacBook Pro. Can you make video about it? Uh, it says I can be the first one on YouTube to do it. And uh, it's actually a kind of an inter uh, interesting question. I guess there are several things that Apple has removed as far as uh, Mac OS Catalina. So we're going to talk about three different things, including dashboard and go in a little bit depth of all three. Now, going to the removal of dashboard, um, it's kind of, dashboard is kind of Apple's way of implementing widgets. Now, before we go into that, I'm going to talk about widgets in general. They were one of the first operating systems to utilize widgets on the desktop. And somewhere down the, long, uh, down the line, they decided, well, we're just going to put all the widgets on a separate page called Dashboard and uh, just put them all there and go from there. Now, I think that was a bad implementation with the use of widgets because it's really kind of a clunky way of doing it you have to switch between dashboard and your desktop rather than have the uh the widget directly on the the, uh, the desktop as you're working you can look at it as, if needed um, plus two you have to put all the widgets that you're planning on using on one page so you have to search through all the widgets to get the right one very haphazard way uh and i think that's why it kind of fell out of favor um i think linux and windows probably implemented widgets a lot easier now they do have something with the notification bar where they have some sort of widgets, but it's not quite the same thing. You still have to open up the uh, notification bar, uh, things like that. Now there used to be, um, when they had the dashboard, you could do a uh, terminal command you type in there where you could drag the widget on the desktop. Um, they end up taking that, once the Mac OS got updated, they kind of took that away to be able to hack into it. And then, I, th I believe the widget was on top of everything else or something like that. I and mean, it was kind of a problem. So um, I think that's why widgets fell out of favor, at least with Mac OS and Apple desktops. And I've stopped using them a lot, you know, a long time ago. So I don't know. Uh, it is what it is. Uh, we're also going to go with iTunes. Um, Apple was, again, uh, of course, announced that they're going to remove iTunes uh in the itunes store and things like that and they're going to separate it into uh different applications um itunes store over the years have become bloated because they, they added so many things into it and they kept on rearranging where you'd find it so each new version you'd have to sometimes search for where it's at and uh, they had so many things they had like uh uh radio mp3 radios um they had uh back up your you know iphone ipad of uh, music they had content as far as videos podcasts and all that so i i stopped using itunes store a long time ago and um also there's some other things the reason why i believe it went away it's not just because of blow uh, being bloated but also because um just the way we view content now for instance um music is entirely different um Physical media kind of went away with music. I mean, not uh, in fact, a lot of the CD stores went away. Uh, um, now, there is a little bit of resurgence with LP records, but that's a very niche market. But um, that kind of got res uh, resurgence of that, which is fine. And even downloading onto your computer or device is not quite done anymore. You could use to, you know, even rip your CDs onto the hard drive. Um, now I think streaming media has definitely taken over and people rather utilize that and, and find new music that way as well. And same thing with, uh, I guess, movies. Um, so yeah, they did separate the iTunes store. I believe it was like, uh, of course, they got music. They have uh, podcasts and, uh, oh, geez, movies. Of course, music. So they kind of separated into those three uh, there might be a few more that I missed because I don't use iTunes uh, that much anymore. I used to. Um, okay, we're also going to talk a little bit about the move from 32-bit to 64-bit. 
So any 32-bit applications we don't have anymore. In fact, even their compressor was 32-bit for a very long time until I changed it a couple of uh, versions ago on Mac OS. And I think it's just natural progression. I mean, uh, look back when we used to have 16-bit, then they moved to 32, and then 32 to 64. And I kind of looked at this in, in deeply, the reason why the move, the move taken place. One of the biggest advantages of going from 32-bit to 64-bit is with 64, you're going to get more access to more memory. So if you have like databases or uh, things that use a lot of memory, you can now access more than a certain amount. Um, I'm not saying if there's maybe more. Um, I think the second reason, I'm kind of contemplating some other reasons why they may do so. It might make it easier for developers, third-party developers, and or Apple themselves because um, you have to keep track of 32-bit applications and you have to keep track of the 64. So it's far easier just going to 64 at the end, I think, for developers. Then you don't have to, you know, separate. Any, anything that makes it easier for developers, I think, is a good thing. Of course, there are some people that were, was unhappy with this because some of their applications um, aren't actively developed anymore. So, and they didn't switch over to another application that's 64 or something like that. So, and so that's pretty much uh, the topic in a nutshell. And I want to thank, of course, uh, Ahmed uh, Oskurt for your question. Uh, very interesting. Until then, see you guys later and uh, have a happy next uh, rest of the week.